if you want to grow food all year round but you get overwhelmed with the constant planting, sowing and keeping things alive and not being behind then this video is going to be life changing. This is my core list of edible perennial plants that even if I was starting from scratch I would still be growing these in my garden because they have multiple different uses both in the garden and in the kitchen. Integrating these perennial plants into your garden is going to give you a consistent supply of food that gets bigger and bigger each year with less effort. Plant once and reap the rewards for many years to come. I've been converting my gardens to more and more perennials and I will not look back. I have been away for two, two and a half months and I'm behind on my planting for the season but I feel like my garden has my back. There's food available all year round and that's thanks to these 22 edible perennials. And this is just my core list of edible perennials so they might not be suited for every garden but we'll touch on that as we go through the list but let me know in the comments what your must-have edible perennial is and make sure you stick around to the end because I've saved the best for last and I have something exciting to share with you. Perennial plants are an investment in your future food production. They grow back each year and help to provide a long-term sustainable garden. And this means that they have less risk of dying, which we like. Um, it is one of my favorite things about these perennials is that they are hardy. They can withstand harsh temperatures, which is perfect for me growing here in Perth, Australia. Okay, so have I sold you on perennials yet? Let's get started. So number one is my favorite, the ultimate in my garden is the sweet potato. Sweet potato has so many uses in the garden and that is why it is my number one plant pretty much on all my lists but especially this perennials list because it has so many uses within the garden and also in the kitchen. So the sweet potato grows as an edible ground cover and that protects the soil, it creates a habitat for our wildlife and it's also got edible leaves. So we can get an edible crop throughout the growing period. We don't have to just wait for the roots to be ready. We can start harvesting those leaves a little bit as the plant grows. And you can use those just as you would spinach. You can put them in a stir fry, in a soup, um, use the young leaves raw in a salad or a smoothie, all the things. It grows well in poor soil. It grows in a whole range of different conditions. It can grow in the shade. It um, can withstand dry weather. Uh, it's not going to be obviously producing at its best in the dry but it can still withstand those drier soils and the root crops are really versatile you can use those in soups and stir fries roasted you can make flour from them you can use them even in sweet dishes and baking there are so many different ways that you can use sweet potato and it also produces a whole lot of food it is a really top performer in terms of producing a yield and in some areas like where I am in Perth, I can grow it all year round. So in other climates where it's colder, it will die down over winter. But as long as there's roots still in the soil, it's going to regrow each year without you having to do anything. Um, if not, you can just plant it again. Next up we have asparagus. Now this is a really long living perennial. So perennials do live for different amounts of time and the asparagus is one of those ones that is a really long term perennial plant. It's going to grow back each year and produce more and more food. So this is the fern part of the asparagus and the actual asparagus shoots form at the very start of spring. So that's usually a time when a lot of other things aren't quite ready. When we're finishing off our winter crops and our summer crops aren't ready yet, the asparagus really fills that gap and produces a whole lot of food. Asparagus does need its own little spot in the garden. So you do have to sort of sacrifice that place, but you can also grow it in containers. So I've got this in a pretty large raised container bed and it's pretty low maintenance, which I love. Another one is the Egyptian walking onion and this is a perennial onion that grows pretty much all year round. And onion is one of those really staple flavor enhancing vegetables. So it's a great one to have in the garden to flavor all your meals 
all year round. The Egyptian walking onion is pretty unique in that it has a bulb on the bottom and also has a little bulb on the top as well and as that bulb grows it gets heavy and it touches the ground and then those regrow and that's why it's called the walking onion because it sort of moves about the garden regrowing itself. So that's a great thing about those is that they do replenish themselves and grow all on their own so I'm all for that. They're pretty hardy, they grow in a whole range of different conditions and they're really low maintenance which is another win. Um, onions are quite a strong scented plant so they can also ward off heaps of pests in the garden um, so that's another great way to have this integrated pest management in your garden by growing these really strong scented plants like your Egyptian walking onion. It's New Zealand spinach or warrigal greens and this is an edible ground cover. It's really lush, it's really thick, it covers the ground and it also provides protection from the harsh sun. It protects that soil and as the leaves sort of die down it also adds nutrients back into the soil. So it's improving our soils as well as providing food for us and food and habitat for our wildlife. So there's a lot of wins on the New Zealand spinach. It's also really hardy, it's pretty drought tolerant and it is prolific. It grows wild and it produces food pretty much all year round. So you can use this just as you would any other spinach. This next one is an edible flower. So the calendula is a really, really beneficial plant for your garden. It has edible flowers, it obviously attracts lots of pollinators to your garden to help pollinate your fruit trees and your other vegetables and fruit so you can get bigger and better harvests. It also has lots of healing properties. It's got anti-inflammatory properties. It is a really, really healing plant. So it's a really great one for skincare and um, lots of body lotions and as well as herbal teas and herbal remedies for you know your colds and flus and things like that. So it's sort of a wonder plant in the garden and it is a perennial so it'll grow back each year. It self seeds really easily. The leaves are edible as well so you can eat the leaves. They're a little bit bitter but use the young ones chopped up fresh in a salad and or in a stir fry, soup, all the things. Um, so it's a really versatile edible plant to have in the garden as well. Next up we have rosemary and this is a really good staple herb to have in the garden. I just gave mine a massive haircut but I still have a decent sized rosemary plant because I think that is a staple and needs to be in all the gardens. It is a really good flavour enhancing herb. You can put that in your roasts and your veggies. Um, it has a really fragrant flavour. It is also really easy to dry and preserve and make flavoured salts. Also a really healing herb. It's got some really medicinal qualities and it is really good for skin care and hair growth and scalp care. It has a really nourishing oil in it so that's another really great one that is good for food and medicinal and it's also really hardy and easy to grow. Low maintenance does its own thing. You can propagate it really easily like with my massive rosemary plant I just bent one of the branches over so that it touched the ground, put a little bit of soil on it and it regrew roots from that whole branch then I could just cut it off and it has its own new plant. You can also just take cuttings and put them in soil make sure they're kept nice and moist and they'll just shoot off roots as well. Make sure you choose sort of a semi hardwood not the really young fresh bendy pieces and not the really hard old wood it's sort of in between to do those cuttings in the bushes <laughs> this one is coming up soon but for now we're going to talk about this plant here this is a fennel and fennel is a really good perennial because it has many different uses it produces a really large bulb during the cooler months in the winter and that is so good for roasting and using in salads um, it's got a little bit of a licorice flavor and goes really well with citrus and then in summer or in the warmer months it produces a lot of these beautiful fern like leaves this one is a bronze fennel but I also have a green fennel as well and the leaves are edible they're really delicious and herb and sort of like got a licorice herby flavor so I use these in salads all the time and as well the flowers are edible and those have a sweet licorice flavor so you can use those in baking, you can use them to decorate cakes, you can use them in salads. Um, they are a really good edible flower and they also attract tons of pollinators to the garden which is 
what we want it's going to help us produce more and more food by having lots of pollinators in the garden so that is why I love the fennel plant and it looks really beautiful in the garden as well it can grow in shade but um, it will produce more leaves in the shade than, than it will bulbs all right so behind me here we have my lemon tree and I think lemons are one of those staple things to have in an edible garden and they usually are one of the first things that people plant in their home garden whether they have edible gardens or not um, this lemon tree was here when we bought the property it was the only tree here right in the corner and it produces a whole lot of lemons with very little care and maintenance it is really prolific and the great thing about lemons is that you can also grow them in containers so if you are renting or you have a small space you can grow a lemon tree in a pot and still get a whole lot of fruit off that lemons are one of my favorite things to have to be able to harvest in the garden because i use them in so many different things they are a staple for salad dressings. They are a really good flavor enhancer. You can make anything with them. Like I use them for baking and cakes and um, to add acidity to, to foods, to brighten the flavor up. And also one of my staples for the cold and flu seasons, using lemons with honey in a hot drink is my go-to for a sore throat or cold and flu has that vitamin C it is so good and soothing and tasty it's just one of my staple food crops in the garden you can obviously also use the lemon peels as well I dehydrate my lemon peels and then blitz them up to make a lemon powder and then this is easily used in lots of different dishes um, it's you can mix it with sugars and have lemon flavored sugars mixed with salt lemon flavored salt passion fruit and now this is an edible vine and the thing i love about this the most is that we can use it use it to utilize our vertical growing spaces that's going to make us be able to grow a whole lot more food because we can utilize that space that may not be used otherwise so i have a passion fruit growing along the back of my fence and you can use that to your benefit to provide shade for your garden it can be grown over an arbor over an archway and you if you need that extra shade in your garden that is a really great way to do that also obviously has passion fruit which are delicious um, they have a hard outer shell so they are a little bit more protected by pests um, passion fruit leaves are edible passion fruit flowers make a really good tea it has really calming properties and it's great for sleep and anxiety as well so there's a lots of medicinal qualities as well to the passion fruit and obviously provides that habitat for our wildlife and attracts bees with its flowers it is just a really good crop to grow and you can also grow passion fruit in a pot as well this one here this is another really great edible perennial crop and it's kind of a pioneer plant and what a pioneer plant is is something that you can grow first up when you haven't gotten a garden established and it's going to provide you with shade really quickly it is such a quick growing plant insanely quick and that means that it's going to be established and be able to give you some shade and some structure for your garden when you are just getting started it also is really easy to take cuttings from so you can repopulate that and put it in different parts of your garden or you can sell or swap or trade those cuttings for other plants to get more plants for your edible garden the mulberry has prolific fruiting so there's so much fruit on this plant and the leaves are also edible you can use the young leaves chopped up um, in teas and in stir fries because it does grow so quick I cut this back all the time and that provides my garden with a whole lot of mulch so um, a lot of that green matter in those branches can also be used in the garden to improve the soil and you can also use the um, branches that you cut off as stakes in your garden to help support other plants there are quite a few different varieties I have a white mulberry here which tastes a little bit like honey another great edible perennial that has a lot of medicinal qualities is ginger so ginger grows rhizomes under the ground and it is a really good middle layer if you are growing in a food forest but it can also be grown in a pot as well so all you have to do is get some ginger chuck it in a pot or in the ground and it will regrow so you plant it in spring and it will be ready in autumn you want to give it about eight to ten months growing 
um, and then you can dig it up and you have a whole lot of ginger that's going to multiply each year so if you leave it in the ground it will regrow on its own and it will just keep multiplying or you can dig it up harvest all of that ginger and then pop some of them back into the garden as well and that way you get a whole lot of harvest but you also get lots more to put back into the garden to regrow ginger has heaps of medicinal qualities another one that's really good for cold and flu season that's a really good one to have in your medicinal garden and the leaves are also edible as well they are really chewy so they're not really palatable but you can use them to enhance flavors of things they are a little bit more mild than ginger and um, you can use them in teas and things like that I've got a few friends hanging out in the garden with me lots of bees on this lavender bush and I always have lavender planted here um, between my Fijo trees because they flower at the same time and that's going to attract lots of pollinators to my garden to help me grow lots more Fijoas which is what we want raspberries I love raspberries I could eat hundreds of raspberries and raspberries are a really delicious perennial plant because they grow back each year and you can get more and more raspberries they're really easy to propagate and oh bird this is my favorite time in the garden this is when the birds come out to play and i love that creating these perennials and having these established trees means that i have a lot more wildlife in my garden all right so raspberries they're easy to grow they um, can take up vertical space you can grow them in containers you can also use the leaves to make teas so raspberry leaf tea is a really delicious one and can form sort of a base of a tea blends so you can use with other things and they're pretty easy to preserve you can just freeze them and use them in baking and smoothies um, you can also make jams and all the delicious baking with the raspberries strawberries these are also another berry that I love and they form part of my ground cover here in my food forest and strawberries are really good edible ground cover so you would have seen those in my video on edible ground covers if you haven't already you can check that one out after this because they send out runners and produce new plants all on their own and they produce obviously delicious strawberries the leaves can also be used in teas as well and the flowers are edible but try not to eat too many of the flowers because then we're not going to get as many strawberries and strawberries are delicious and you can grow strawberries in pots and containers really easily as well so I just love that they're easy to grow and they repopulate and grow more strawberry plants all on their own mint is another staple herb in my garden I have mint growing in containers and I really suggest that you grow mint in containers people were quite <laughs> um, conflicted on that whether mint needs to be grown in containers or not because some people really struggle to grow mint I think the thing is with mint that you can't really risk it so either it's going to grow really well or it's not but if it does take off it is so hard to get out of your garden it sends down runners under the ground and it smothers plants it takes over so I guess the risk there is if it does take off you're kind of stuffed so that's why I always plant mint in containers regardless of how much space I have um, to contain it and even putting something underneath that container because the runners can go down through the little hole in the bottom of the pot and take off into your garden so don't give them an inch because they will take a mile mint's a really good staple herb um, it's really refreshing and it's easy to grow I find it easy to grow it just likes really moist conditions so I have it in semi shade or dappled shade and make sure it's well watered and it's so easy to regrow you can just take cuttings put them in a jar of water and they'll have roots and you can plant them in another area or give them away and gift some little mint plants to people and there's so many different varieties of mint I've got apple mint grapefruit mint chocolate mint do I have any more mints or oh, peppermint and just the common mint I think I have four different mints and I use it in tea all the time I just pop mint dehydrated lime or lemon and even some lavender if I'm having if I want a calming tea it's one of my favorite tea blends and that means I'm pretty much self-sufficient in tea an apple tree is another great staple fruit crop to grow because you can use it for so many different things you can obviously eat apples fresh you can make chutneys and sauces and apple pies 
apple sauce also a substitute for butter in some baking recipes you can make dehydrated snacks and it's a deciduous plant so if you plant this near your veggie patch it can provide some shade in summer when it has leaves and then it will drop its leaves and let light in in winter so you can use that to your advantage as well banana is another really good perennial which is actually a herb and the banana plant or tree or whatever you like to call it um, is a really good one to have growing in your garden because it has many different benefits so it's pretty quick growing um, and once you get the bananas which obviously we bananas are great they're fantastic they're a really versatile crop um, you can use them in so many different things once bananas produce those bananas that whole tree thingy then dies and needs to be cut down so that provides your garden with a whole lot of mulch and organic material to nourish and feed your soil so that is another good reason to have bananas is that they are going to provide your garden with a whole lot more orga organic matter um, you can use the leaves for heaps of different things you can use them to steam things use them as a platter um, they make a really beautiful table decoration the and the flowers are also edible as well so the inside of the flower can be used um, can be cooked up and used and the other great thing about bananas is they self populate so they send off little mini side shoots off the bottom of the banana and they just repopulate themselves so you can cut those off and move them around your garden um, to get heaps more banana plants so once you have bananas established in your garden you're pretty much good to go turmeric is a another multiplying root crop or rhizome crop that can grow in the middle layer of your food forest and produces more and more food each year it also can be grown in pots and so you can get a whole bunch of turmeric from just a small pot um, and then you can use that and then keep a little bit to regrow the following year turmeric has really healing properties as well it's used as an anti-inflammatory and it's also a really good flavor enhancing um, herb or spice to use in the kitchen Perennial basil is another herb that you can grow in the garden that grows nearly all year round. It is attracts lots of pollinators to the garden and it is similar to a normal basil but it has a stronger flavour. So it's a lot more, yeah, a lot stronger, a lot harsher flavour than the regular basil but it's hardier and it can withstand a lot more conditions. So if you love the basil flavour then that is a really good perennial version to get in the garden. Another flavour enhancing one that I have in my garden that I can pretty much eat all year round is society garlic. So this is this has a flavor similar to garlic and it has edible leaves sort of look like chives and then a beautiful pink flowers that are edible as well um, and they have really nice delicious garlic flavor so it produces an abundance of food and flavor and it regrows by itself it just gets a bigger clump that you can then divide up and put throughout the rest of your garden so I love that I love plants that sort of self-populate and I can just split them up and put them in other areas of my garden because that reduces the risk of them dying if one plant struggles I know I've got it in other areas of my garden so that's one thing I do love about society garlic and have a delicious garlic flavor all year round so the society garlic has a really robust garlicky flavor it's got a quite a bite to it so it's got a little bit of a spicy bite to it um, but this is really delicious added into your dishes for a extra flavor it's also a lot more easier to care and look after than garlic so if you live in a really humid place or a place that you struggle to grow garlic then maybe try society garlic because it is a lot easier to grow than garlic a lot more low maintenance globe artichokes produce a whole lot of food and are a beautiful plant to have in the garden so they have really silver ornamental foliage and they produce these big globe artichokes that are delicious so I love growing artichokes in my garden and I have a purple variety and I just planted a green variety as well um, they do take up quite a bit of space so you do need to have a decent amount of space for them but I love having them in the garden and when you let those artichokes go to flower they hum with bees so they attract heaps of pollinators into your garden as well as providing a really good habitat for your wildlife. Artichokes send off side shoots so they repopulate on their own and you can take those off and put them in different areas of your garden um, or you can just let them grow and have 
a bigger artichoke plant. All right, so this one is a little bit unusual. You may not have heard of this, and that is a pepino. A pepino is a sort of perennial melon. So if you like rock melon or honeydew melon, sort of has a melon flavor, but it produces melons pretty much all year round. They are smaller and you can eat the whole thing. They also repopulate by cutting super easy. So if one branch falls down, it'll start growing roots right there in the ground, or you can just cut them off, chuck them in a jar of water, they'll shoot off new roots and you can and you can pop them throughout your garden to have melons all year round. All right, so this one behind me is my favorite. And of course, this kiwi had to get this perennial plant in and that is the Fijoa or the pineapple guava. So. To me, it's called a feijoa, and here in Australia, they do call them pineapple guavas um, because they do have a sort of pineapple cross guava flavor. They're really fragrant. You can eat the whole fruit, the skin as well. Yes, you can eat the skin. It is delicious. Just make sure you eat it with the inside as well. Don't scoop out the inside, then try to eat the skin because it's a bit too sour. So there are heaps of benefits to growing feijoas in your garden. They are low maintenance. They produce fruit on new mainly on the new wood so you can cut them back each year and create a whole lot of organic matter for your garden for your compost use it as mulch and then they'll shoot off new growth and that's where the fruit will mainly be on so i cut mine back every year or every other year and that provides me with a whole lot of mulch for my garden they are really dense plants so they make a really good screen cover for your fence so you can grow them as an edible hedge as well um, so you can have a fetch, which is a food hedge or a feijoa hedge, whatever you want to call it. They are evergreen, so they look beautiful like this all year round. And the flowers are edible. They have a sort of strawberry sherbet flavor. They also have fire retardant qualities. So if you have vulnerable areas on your property where you could get fire coming in from, you could plant feijoas along that area and that might help slow down that fuel load because of those fire retardant qualities and they're just delicious i eat them fresh on their own or you can use them in baking you can make jams and chutneys you can make fijo wine or liqueur um, use them in smoothies and juices they are just delicious and because i'm so passionate about these edible plants i've put them all together in an ebook with some extra tips that is going to be free for you to download so make sure you check that out in the description